Tuesday, December 15th, and you're listening to the Geek News Central Podcast, sponsored by GoDaddy.com. Geek News Central is a problem of the Tech Podcast Network. Have I got a great show for you, and yes, I am fully recovered from the 24-hour podcast. I don't know if the studio is. Got a lot to share with you. You know what to do next. Strap in. Here it comes. All right, people, I need a go no go for the Geek News Central podcast. Digital archive recorders. We're go fly. Microphone. We're go fly. Video feed. Go. Web browser. Go. RSS data stream aggregator. Go fly. Interflux totism suppressor. All right, I'm confused. Post readiness check. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. The Geek News Central podcast is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to go. Q Todd in five. Bucky, Bucky, who's got the fuck? Four. There is no cause for alarm. Three. Everybody hold on to something. Two. Just press the button. One. It's showtime. Aloha and welcome to the Geek News Central podcast coming to you as live as it can be from the beautiful state of Hawaii via the Geek News Central studio overlooking greater Oahu. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. My name is Todd Cochran, of course. I want to encourage you to get over to geeknewscentral.com. Check out all the great content over there. Of course, check out our archive podcast available via the podcast link on the website. You want to get signed up for our newsletter as well because there's going to be some special stuff coming to the newsletter for newsletter folks only as a new feature. Speaking of new features, I've got a lot of stuff to talk about, about new features and some changes uh, forthcoming here at, uh, at Geek News Central. Um, hey, lots of stuff happening. A lot. And I tell you, I'm completely motivated after getting done with with the 24-hour podcast. It was a great event, uh, besides a few dropouts by Ustream, but we'll talk about that a little bit on what happened during the award ceremony. But, uh, wow, I tell you, 24 hours, I got done, and I felt like someone stuck a fork in me and uh, went to bed Sunday morning at about 6.15, <laughs> 15 minutes after we wrapped up, and I was up by noon. Had a birthday party for my son, and everything was uh, pretty good until about 6 o'clock in the evening, and I was starting to feel my Wheaties, and then I actually caught my second win, and I worked until midnight. So it was kind of actually ended up being a productive day even on Sunday after having done 24 hours straight online. Of course, if you're a new listener to the regular show here at Geek News Central, I want to welcome you to the podcast, and uh, welcome to the Ohana. The Ohana, being here in Hawaii, Ohana means family. And uh, being that you're listening to the show and, and hopefully now will subscribe to the show, um, you will become part of the Ohana of the Geek News Central podcast. And I uh, hope that you uh, will tune in twice a week, whether it be, th- be a live on Ustream or if it be via mobile device, wherever you may be listening day or night. Um, you can get subscribed to the show by going over to geeknewscentral.com and you'll find an RSS link there for your feed readers or you can subscribe to the podcast to Zoom Marketplace or iTunes. That way you'll never miss an episode of the Geek News Central podcast. So what's going on? Um, I just want to give you guys a heads up. There may be um, some emergency travel that I may have to um, to do. And if I do, I will not be on the air. Uh, something has come up today. I don't want to go into details about what's going on, except that there's a potential of emergency travel. What I will likely do is if I'm going to be gone more than a week or 10 days, I will have um, an emergency host come in um, and actually, well, have a, a standby host come in and produce the show uh, while I'm gone. Uh, we get a couple of different people to come in, and uh, really this will be only the second time in five years that this potential has, you know, but basically this may this has come up. So... I just wanted to give you a heads up. Nothing is official right now. We're just trying to figure out exactly what's going on. But again, potential uh, possible emergency travel. And I'm really stressing it a little bit because, you know, Consumer Electronics Show is just around the corner and the timing with all that. So actually tomorrow night I'm going to be packing everything for CES, including all the clothes and everything I'm having all ready in boxes to ship. And I'll take them over to a friend of mine's house with FedEx labels on them. So if the family and I have to leave, then at least uh, I know that the stuff gets shipped to Vegas so that I can be, uh, if I have to, fly directly back to Vegas uh, from this emergency travel. So we'll keep you advised on that, but uh, that's a potential here 
But uh, we'll, we'll find someone to do the show. Don't worry. Won't be coming from the studio here, but we'll give someone else some exposure uh, to the podcast. Now, this kind of comes in a strange time because tonight I'm actually introducing something new. And um, it is a – it's it's basically – I made the decision during the 24-hour podcast to make this – well – it's not necessarily a change. It's not going to be a change to any of the audio content or anything on the show. But I put a new link up um, on the website at geeknewcentral.com. And uh, let's see if I can actually find it here. There's a new link on there. It says Geek New Central Supporters. Supporter. And basically, I want to kind of read exactly what this says so that you guys get an idea of uh, of what is forthcoming and what my plan is. Now, you guys have you guys know that I've already talked about that I've got big plans for this show over the next couple of years. And I've actually um sat down with my my wife and we've actually laid out some things that we think we can accomplish in the next couple of years that will take this show and some other shows to the next level. And also maybe bringing in some additional content. Uh, you guys know when I first launched the Geek News Central podcast, um, it was with a goal of being able to really retire from the Navy and make it my day job. Now, very fortunately, the show was sponsored uh, very early on, allowing me to reach that goal and be able to uh, do this job essentially full time. Um, of course, I do stuff for Raw Voice as well, and I'll get into that in a second. But essentially what I have been able to do is um, – really build a huge base, uh, build a good property here, and I think we can go further with that. Um, to date, I have not needed an audience-supported model because of the advertising on the show. You guys, you know, you hear that. So what I have done, advertising has paid my salary now for two years, and it helps keep the lights on, as I talk about in the show. But there's such a significant opportunity to do so much more if I had the resources to do it. So as you know, as I've said before, we only have two advertisers for generally 75 minutes of programming each show. And I, wanna, and I think adding more advertisers would really be pushing it. So what I'm going to be introducing is um, essentially a plan and I'm introducing an audience contribution model that I don't know if it's going to work. We'll see. Um, but being that I take a salary today from my personal company, Podcast Connect, which is my company that I do business under, and all my properties, my personal properties, um, I take a salary from that company. From here on out, every listener contribution that comes in to the show um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to use that to replace the salary I'm now taking from the company. So if someone contributes uh, $2 a month or $5 a month, I will take that much money and set it back into the general fund at Podcast Connect. And it, that money will be slated to go pay for um, maybe a production assistant initially, someone on a part-time basis, or at some point, someone that I can bring in full-time to help me build the content and build the network um, that I want to build and um, so is it going to replace will contributions replace if the size if the audience follows through and there's a percentage of you that do it could and we could very quickly bring on a full-time person um, if all of the audio you know if the audio audience follows and, and feels the, the the content's worth it in order to do that now we'll still take advertising Okay, the advertising again goes to the general fund, but the advertising itself is going to go to pay for new people, not me. Um, and, but it, and then while we make this transition, there'll be a time when, you know, until we get to the point where the dollars are significant enough, I won't be able to, you know, it'll kind of be like a transition period. So we'll do part time people in the beginning or whatever. Now, most of you also know that I'm the CEO of Raw Voice, and you probably wonder, okay, Todd, you get a salary over there, and why, why are you begging for money? Um, to, to date, I have not taken a salary uh, with Raw Voice. And the reason for that is is because I wanted to continue to build re raw, raw Voice. We can use the resources elsewhere. This show has been sufficient in carrying, really, and taking care of me here and my family. 
So I do receive a small stipend each month for some, you know, expenses and some of my cell phone costs and so forth. But that's about it. It's not really very much. So again, the dollars you contribute each month will go towards my salary placement and will be paced, placed back in the general fund. Um, that, again, the money will be used to increase the production. I will report monthly the percentage of salary placed so that we can track how we are progressing as an audience or as a team uh, towards that goal. Um, ultimately, what you pay or what you contribute each month will be um, – I'll take that as an indication that you like where the show's going or not. And basically, a basic contribution is going to start out at $2. And then there's a three or four different levels. And then there is a one-time contribution if you want to do that as well. Um, I know this is a big step. This is a big change. Um, but really, in order to go where we need to go and be able to have the resources to do what we do, um, I think this is viable. Now, maybe it won't work. And maybe I'll have to add another advertiser at some point, which I really don't want to do. So the content that the um, bloggers put on, the you know, I pay the bloggers at Geek News Central to blog. They will not be paid out of that. They will be paid out of the general fund, out of what I uh, earn for advertising on the site. The awards, we're going to make a change today. So if I'm asking you guys to, you know, pony up a couple bucks a month, if you, you know, if you feel the contents were now again, it's all voluntary. This is no one's mandatory to do this or anything like that. And I'm not going to be harping on this. And this is basically me telling you guys a one time deal here, what the full st story is. Um, the amount of money that we actually do for cash giveaways in the show, you guys know I do that from time to time is going to be limited from here on out to 1% of gross revenues of the advertising revenues only. Well, we won't take any of your money that you contribute and put that back towards stuff that we give other people. That just doesn't make any sense. So we're gonna, you know, we do a certain amount of promotion and 1% of, of our budget will be for promotion for giveaways and stuff on the show. Um, information is on the website. I don't know what you guys think about this. I don't think if, you know, if you guys think it's a bad idea, email me. Again, it's completely voluntary, and uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But um, I was convinced during hour one and hour two of the 24-hour podcast that we really had to go. And what really kind of blew me away was when Rob Greenlee came on and showed me that on Windows Media Center, they are placing podcasters – and mainstream media, CBS News, Sports Channel, all of they're putting bloggers intermixed in and around that content on Windows Media Center. So we have to get this content, and we have to build this network to the point where I'm worthy of a spot on Windows Media Center and all these other TVs that are coming out that are going to be IP ready. We've already talked about that in the shows previous. You know, where I want to be in two years. The audio audience of this show is and will remain my main focus. I don't want that to suffer at all. Okay, that's the important thing. But also, I have to be ready and move us towards a point where if you want to watch me on your tube, you can. Instead of listening to me on your iPod. But, and, you know, it's up to you guys. Um, I was playing for Roku Box Sunday night. And I was blown away by the quality of what was Re Revision 3 was doing, what Leo over at Twit was doing. I was really blown away because boom, 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 three or four clicks of a mouse, and I'm watching Twit. I'm watching Revision 3 content. Um, and I've invited and I've solicited members of the Tech Podcast Network who we already have a relationship with, those that want to go to the next level, to – Come together, and maybe we're going to have a little tighter union, per se. We'll still do stuff under the probably under the TPN banner, but it's basically going to be a group of shows that really want to go, go somewhere and beyond where they're at now and move into the next phase of new media. And uh, that's just going to take resources. It's going to take money. Some of the shows aren't as big. They're going to need to be promoted. Um, you know, so this is a challenge that we have is to – go there 
And I'd rather do it with friends that I trust and people I know and work with now than, you know, taking a spot with another company or, not, and, you know, putting the show on another network. Because I have been approached in the past to take Geek New Central and make it part of someone else's group that was pretty well established. But no, you know, I decided not to do that because I like the people I'm aligned with and the, the values that we have for the content that we create. So um, that's kind of what's going on with that. I'm sure I'm going to hear lots of feedback. Um, again, completely voluntary. And I'm not going to pressure you. There's a link on the website. I'll mention it from time to time in passing. That's it. It's not going to be like this long blown out thing I just done now. But I wanted to explain to you all what my strategy was and why and why I'm doing or why I'm, you know, asking you guys maybe to come in as a contribution model. Will we continue to have advertising in the in the show? Absolutely. That's going to drive the engine on this thing. It really, really is. GoDaddy and GoToMeeting and Citrix and all those folks that have advertised in the show in the past, Hitachi, all those folks drive the show to where it needs, you know, that's really built us where we are today. So anyway, that's it on that. And, uh, of course, if you have comments or questions, geeknews at, uh, at gmail.com. So if there's anybody in the chat room that has any um, comments, yeah, Jeffrey says stock and podcast. That's right. You, you are essentially. Um, if I could, you know, I'm not. I can't give up positions in the company. That is not how we're set up. Um, and I'm, I can't solicit that on this show because I'll get in trouble with the SEC. But absolutely, you guys will have a stock and have a stake, stakeholders in where we go next. And if you like the content, you'll you'll put your stake in with us and move forward. And I think as a family, I think you guys should be excited, kind of where we're going. I really do. I'm really excited. If you can't tell I am, you have to watch the first hour of the 24-hour uh, podcast with me and Ming Young Fogarty and her partner Richard. And then you need to, I'll put it up tomorrow, watch the second hour where I had Rob Greenlee on and him and I were talking. And there was so much good content in the 24-hour podcast that over the next month or month and a half, if you get a chance, watch each of the segments. Some of it you'll get l l more or less on, but there was a ton of gold in that show. I'm getting comments today. I've probably gotten 100 emails today alone saying best show ever, best content ever. And people bared their souls. It was fun. It really was, and we had a good time. So, um, And plus, we raised money for Ronald McDonald House. I think it was $1,069 that we raised so I want to applaud all of you that contributed, and thank you. And if you want to contribute, there will be a link to the PayPal for Ronald McDonald House um, in the next two newsletters that go out and also on the blog. So I know I actually need to double dip here, but uh, the Ronald McDonald House check will go out next week. So thank you all of you for, for your contributions there. Podcast Award trophies they haven't arrived yet. <laughs> and the Podcast Awards on Ustream. I, I told you a stream we, they were coming and that we were going to do a special event and whew, we smoke checked them. I mean, there was people, uh, five or six hundred people that just basically got a spinning dial when they brought up the stream on Ustream. It, it, it just was, they couldn't handle the load. I didn't even know. I was watching here, you know, in the, you know, watching basically kind of a side. I could see my video running. I didn't have time to watch the chat. But people were pretty upset. Nothing I could do. And it was, you know, and I'm sure there was some podcast hosts that couldn't. I was complaining, you know, where's everybody at? And I was, you know, I was kind of trying to cover for them and told, you know, telling everybody I'd, you know, reached out. And there was people that had sent their bios and we, they never rung in to Wahanasaurus. But we also gave everyone the talk shoe number so they could listen live. Talk shoe stayed up. And we gave them a private dial in number. To the Ohana source as well. And those of you who haven't seen the Ohana source, it's it's over. Well, well, that camera's lined up good, isn't it? The Ohana source, and <laughs> uh, you can see half the Ohana source. I think when well, I must have bumped it when I, you know, what a knucklehead I am. But anyway, they didn't dial in, so who knows? So anyway, we'll see if the trophies get here in the next few days. Um, 24 hour podcast stuff. We'll start uploading that. We'll get it all online. We'll let you know about it. Okay, that's enough on that. So let's take care of a little business. GoDaddy.com. Got an email from one of you. 
you save the 20% using the Todd 20 code, getting a Christmas present for your wife, a hosting account with a blog. See? Very good. Very, very good. Congratulations. Again, GoDaddy.com. If you're looking for domain names, virtual dedicated servers, dedicated servers, whatever it may be, really, that's the place to go. GoDaddy.com. And when you get to that checkout counter, use the promo code TODD. Save yourself 10% on non-domain orders. Geek5 will save you 15% on orders $20 or more. TODD20 will save you 20% on one-year shared hosting accounts. ComSale will get you .com domains at $749. There's a, there's a promo code for everybody. So check it out. There's a link on the website at geeknewcentral.com. So thanks to GoDaddy for being a continued sponsor here of the show. It always, as well, during the 24 hours, we did our annual Christmas special. Uh, both Annie McCaskey and Jeffrey Powers. Annie, Annie McCaskey, of course, from SDR News and sdrnews.com. And Jeffrey Powers from Geekazine, geekazine.com, <laughs> as you know, Jeffrey teases me. Uh, they did it, some Christmas, uh, gave us some Christmas ideas. That the video is not up yet. Something I'm still pu getting ready to push. Actually, it's all encoded. I need to get it up. But that event was sponsored, of course, by GoToMeeting. And you guys know, I use this product. I live it. I use it. It's on a daily basis. I'm in the application. So if you have business contacts in L.A., New York, or even abroad, and believe me, if I have to make the trip overseas, there will be... We'll be using GoToMeeting from abroad, probably from uh, from uh, from my wife's uh, family's place or something. So you'd like to meet them more often, but traveling is expensive and time-consuming. So that's why I want you to use GoToMeeting to hold meetings online. Brought to you by Citrix. It's the easiest online meeting service available. You really simply set up meetings in advance or start one on the fly. Uh, everyone logs into the GoToMeeting.com, and then they can see your computer desktop on their computer screen so it's just like meeting a person in per meeting in person you can host unlimited meetings for one low flat rate for this special offer you must visit go to meeting.com slash tech podcast that's go to meeting.com slash tech podcast for a free trial and hey thank you to the sponsors for not having to have me come out and ask you guys for any money for five years it's pretty cool yeah yeah you know so, you know, they've taken care of us, but we need to go further. <laughs> we need to take this bus higher. You know, and that's going to require cash. <laughs> cash on the barrel head. All right, let me go ahead and uh, and bring up the uh, the first tech news tonight, because that's what you guys came for. Oh, my God, did I go long on talking about that stuff. All right, let's talk about the iPhone service. Ars Technique has an article that reports where the New York Times was reporting that the iPhone service is Apple's fault. Hmm. You know, there's a lot of, uh, is, is New York Times have stock in Apple? I mean, a stock in AT&T? You know, there's a lot of iPhones throughout the world, and you don't hear people in the UK or other countries that have them complaining about their carrier, do you? Or complaining about the iPhone, but the New York Times is making the case that it's the iPhone itself that's it's a problem, with not AT and T's network. Now, who do you guys trust? Do you guys tr trust Consumer Reports, or do you trust New York Times? I just, I talk about an interesting article. I'll have a link for you in the show notes. But uh, Consumer Reports rep uh, re uh, placed AT&T last in customer satisfaction. And uh, another website, Boy Genius Report, which placed AT&T in the middle of the pack when it comes to raw average network speed. And they are also evidence that suggests a high drop call rate. And I know that for a fact. I'm driving my car. I lose connection all the time. Uh, and I, sitting right here in my house, I've got one bar right now it goes from one bar to five bars it can't make up its mind but uh what do you think think this is a <laughs> i can't believe at&t said that to, i mean new york times said that to be honest with you but we all know the truth now we have a number of listeners in germany and uh they don't call in or write to the show very often but for those of you that are in germany if you have a windows computer and uh you're having some malware or virus problems 
the gov- the gov- excuse me, the German government is planning to establish a malware cleanup helpline for its citizens. Announced last week at the German IT summit, the uh, project's going to start in 2010, where ISPs are going to team up with the German Federal Office for information security, and they're going to get have a website available to instruct consumers on how to uh, remove uh, malware and bots from their computers, and they're also going to make it available a national dial-in helpline to help German people get their uh, computers cleaned up. Microsoft had no comment. <laughs> and that should come as no surprise whatsoever. No comment. <laughs> oh, man. So we'll see. We'll see what happens here. Now, big news today out of Google, of course, is that Google announced that they've got their employees walking around with Google phones. I bl- believe the Google phones are actually being uh, uh, manufactured by HTC and that Google was completely um, involved in the design of the Google phone. And something, that's, something that is being talked about is that they are going to essentially sell a non-branded phone. So you just buy the phone and you pick the carrier that, you know, the phone is built for, whether it be, hopefully they'll come out with three or four different models. So you can, if you're on Verizon, Sprint, T-Mobile, and we're not going to say AT&T or, you know, you'll be able to go to a carrier and say, Hey, I got a phone. I want service and sign up for a contract. Or just switch it over if you're on a current contract. So they're not saying how much the phone's going to cost. But I bet you it'll be subsidized. I bet you it'll be cheap. And uh, we'll see. This could be, uh, you know, the first true phone to compete with the iPhone. If Google has a good experience. If it makes the Android ex- experience better than what we're seeing on um, Android phones. on you know, being actually controlled by T-Mobile and Verizon and so forth. So, you guys going to buy one? I probably will. Buy a couple. <laughs> Give them to my kids and put them on, you know, make them <laughs> make them droids. Let's see here. What's going on there? That's odd. Okay, over on the BBC, over criticism of the privacy changes, you know, what's good for the ganders, you know, what's good for the goose, good for the gander. Facebook founder... Uh, has changed the privacy settings on his personal page to open it up to friends of friends. <laughs> that means that hundreds of his photographs and status updates are now visible to a very wide audience. Before the switch, only minimal information was available about him. and uh, But still, he hasn't opened it up completely to everyone, but he wants you to. I logged into Facebook yesterday and uh, was presented with a number of options and I made my choices and I don't know what it's going to mean but we'll see and I'm I'm actually going to have to I don't think it'll have any effect but definitely it's going to add some Google juice to my listing at Facebook those of you in the UK you know did your government try to raise taxes on you you know they're having some problem collecting debts by taxpayers of course that's a problem here in the United States too so uh, they've got some issues with the computers. Old computers are hindering tax recovery in the UK. And uh, the UK's total tax take fell by 22, 22 billion pounds to 436. Wow. UK totals, total tax take fell by 22 billion pounds to uh, 436 billion pounds in fiscal year... 2008-2009, and uh, I guess they are looking, they, they feel they have about 11.2 to 27.7 billion pounds that are owed that they have been unable to collect on because of aging computer systems. So uh, that's pretty significant uh, amount of uh, money considering that the revenues fell by 22 billion pounds. If they could have collected that additional uh, money, you know, it had been even Steven and uh, probably wouldn't have had to cut some of the services that they've had to cut. 
over on Business Week. Forecast for 2010, the coming cloud catastrophe. Mark Anderson predicts a big remote computing service disaster, lost momentum for Microsoft, and growth in consumer payments for online news content. This guy is, uh, every year he does a prediction. And he's run about 90% for the 2009 predictions. It's a pretty good video to watch. So he thinks that uh, most of us are going to start paying more for online news. <laughs> well, I just asked you guys to pay for online news, I guess. So I don't know. What do you guys think? You guys going to go out and, you know, pay for the New York Times? Are you going to pay, you know, to read the, uh, the journal? Or are you already paying to read the journal? Time will tell. But uh, anyway, his predictions for, for 2010. How many of you shop at Best Buy? Probably about the only, you know, at least here in Hawaii, Best Buy is <laughs> it's just about it when it comes to, you know, except for a few mom and pop shops that sell computers. I do most of my hardcore computer buying uh, online. I do, uh, you know, some, some comparisons in pricing. And, uh, but Best Buy has really got some clout now because as the last major electronic retailer standing in other words box retailer uh, not big box but you know just regular uh, supply chain or you know department chain they are having major influence in design and features on electronics that are actually coming out and they've actually this blew me away they've actually got a venture capital fund that uh, basically looks at startups that are doing innovative stuff and they're investing in companies that are coming up with design ideas and in products for the future. Pretty cool. So we'll see. We'll see what happens here. But uh, Best Buy, you guys shop there? My wife was actually cashing in on our, well, you get we are, you can bar, uh, be part of their payment or bonus club or whatever it was. And she says, honey, all you got to buy is $270 more worth of stuff. So I can be a, you know, whatever it is, a super buyer or something like that. And I'm like, I don't need nothing. She goes, well, I'm going to go shop around. I'm like, we don't need nothing. <laughs> I said, what's it going to get us? And, you know, and it's just like driving five miles for another, you know, save two cents more on gas. And, you know, I looked at it, I'm like, and it's, you know, you're going to spend $270 to get an additional five bucks back. I said, yeah, come on, you know, don't fall for that hook, line and sinker. Don't go there. So, uh, and she goes, yeah, yeah, you're, you're right. And she, I still saw over there clicking around looking for stuff. <laughs> so uh, it was kind of funny, but uh, we'll see. All right, big, big predictions, big analysis being done on the AT&T price move, talking about how they're going to uh, start, to, you know, having different levels of data usage for us iPhone users. They uh, say it's probably going to backfire big time. There's been some polls done, and it uh, is something that if AT&T does, is going to uh, tarnish their name even more. There was a report out that uh, their brand has been hurt significantly because of, you know, the issues they've had over the last uh, last year. So uh, I know that a lot of people talked about it during the show. I was having fun on the show. I was telling everybody on the show, hey, download some streaming stuff and get to streaming on your AT&T network. <laughs> Listen to the show. Watch the show on YouTube on, on your phone. And do it via AT&T. <laughs> Does Twitter mean business with contributor tests? Uh, something Twitter's doing is uh, it's a new feature they're testing for business communication. Businesses communicating with their customers or potential customers. Up to this point, Twitter really has not introduced any new features to support these business users, but as part of an initiative to roll out more business-specific features, and this is from CNET, uh, Twitter on Money introduced contributors. Contributors allow business accounts to designate other Twitter users, usually employees or PR, to tweet on their behalf. Uh, Twitter is currently testing this with a limited subset of folks. We just gave everyone that Twitter's for us on Blueberry and Raw Voice, we just all have the password to it. You know, we don't have to have some contributor account. But uh, that, uh, it'll come out in your, like for Blueberry, it'll be Blueberry, blah, 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 whatever we say. And it'll say 10 minutes ago from web by, and it'll have the name of the person that actually tweeted it from within the company. 
So uh, it, it basically puts a face to the name on the Twitter, which probably is kind of cool. So I don't know how much they're going to charge for that, but uh, I guess, you know, it keeps it more personal. I think as long as you twit as a good policy, you have a good policy. Matter of fact, I had a great conversation about Twitter policy near the end of the 24 podcast. That's actually made the rounds already on the net. It's starting to get some huge hits. So um, the uh, we'll see what happens with this contributors on Twitter. I was talking with uh, Andrew Darlow was on for about, oh boy, an hour and a half, right in the wee hours of the morning, uh, Sunday morning, and talking about digital photography. And uh, Andrew is a lifetime professional photographer. And he basically came on and was talking to us about, uh, you know, better ways to, you know, five or six steps to take uh, better pictures of your pets. Now, I guess this is a big thing. People like to take a lot of good pictures of their pets. Um, my dog was in our Christmas card this year. And I have to put that up in the online. But, you know, we held him up and took the picture you know it was nothing fancy and uh but i guess a lot of people love their pets so much they take as good a picture as they do of their of their regular kids and I, he was again talking about lens types and lighting and a lot of stuff like that and we're talking about uh, a lot of cameras now uh being used you know to shoot video and i talked about how i had an interview at uh blog world where the guy just shot hd video of me that once i saw on the net was awesome so we were talking about which cameras could do it. You got to check out this EOS 7D. Whew, my goodness. What a camera. It is nice. Now, Andrew will probably weigh in on this, on how good it shoots HD video. But uh, it's pretty nice camera. A nice review. Pretty nice price, too. Sixteen ninety nine. Well, I can get it. it. Looks like for sixteen. Yeah, sixteen ninety nine at Newegg. But uh, if you're looking for a a new body or big body camera, DSL DSLR camera, the uh, eighteen meg eighteen MP photo quality at eight frames per second shooting is is pretty good. So it's expensive. It's heavy, and uh, you better have a serious wallet to buy this thing. But just looking at it in the review here at digitaltrends.com. Pretty nice camera. Really, really is. Make a nice addition to my household. But we gotta figure out how to use our rebel first. That's <laughs> we'll go on to that later. Hey, how many of you knew that you had to calibrate your flat screen, your L C D or plasma H D T V? Yeah yes, you just heard me say that correctly. Calibrate your plasma or H D T V. I just used the remote control to get the picture to look the best. <laughs> I didn't calibrate it. But most TVs are calibrated to catch your attention on the showroom floor. But we'll sh this article is going to show you how to change your display to achieve the optimum levels for use at home. And it talks about uh, adjusting the lighting, let your TV warm up, adjusting the brightness, contrast, sharpness, tune color. And there's also a calibration DVD that you can uh, actually download. All right, someone in here has got to be a hardcore LCD or plasma HD TV reviewer. Is this a bunch of bunk, or is this someone trying just to get us to buy some, you know, some calibration gear or calibration stuff for our for our TVs? I think our eyeballs can calibrate pretty good, can't they? Another article over on CNET. Google gets into the URL shrinking biz with goo.gl. Goo dot Google <laughs> G O O dot G L. Um, this is an interesting move by them. Google's URL shortener is a service that takes long URLs and squeeze them into fewer characters to make a link that is easier to share, tweet, or email to friends. And they tied this into Feed Burner. You guys know my thoughts on Feed Burner. <laughs> you know, some of you that have listened to the show for a long time email me and say, Todd, I know what you're talking about about FeedBurner. Why didn't I listen? FeedBurner is great for some people to use. But they have done very little with the service since they've owned it. Google, that is. It has had 
performance issues. We have special code written at Raw Voice. When we aggregate RSS feeds, we have to give feed burner feeds a lot longer to, to parse. Sometimes they don't update for many hours from the original blog content. And continue, though, people continue to use them. They continue to use FeedBurner. And uh, you guys know my stance on using, you know, an RSS, you know, using a third-party service to really um, uh, supposedly, quote-unquote, improve your RSS feed. But anyway, they're going to be using this tiny, this goo.gl service within FeedBurner. Does that scare you a little bit, uh, long URLs being parsed, your URLs, your domain.com, links being parsed to goo.gl.com or dot slash link? They've also added some Twitter functions into FeedBurner now. So I'd love to hear you guys' feedback on this. Go over there and check. If those of you have FeedBurner accounts, I know some of you do, go over there and check it out. Let me know what, uh, you know, is this an opt-in thing? Are you going to further diminish your brand by letting Google have your own? I use my own. I have a URL, URL shortener. I bought them. I bought them myself. They're not that short, but I bought three domains, and I'm using an application called Shorty to redirect URLs, but I control the domain that's being the redirect and I control the server and I can look at the stats and those are mine. I don't have to worry about uh, that going down or the service going away or the company going out of business or the server being slow. If my server's slow, it's my fault and uh, not some of the third party's fault or where I can't have a direct connection to someone. If I'm mad at the hosting provider, I hit him in the face. <laughs> So uh, I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts on goo.gl. All right, domain names are getting international flavors. The European Commission has introduced the use of non-Roman characters in EU domain names, allowing the names to incorporate characters from all 23 official languages of the European Union for the first time. Many of users will come from countries where most languages are not based on the A to Z Latin script, and they will naturally want their own script. So the launch of international domain num, name, excuse me, the launch of international domain names under .eu will, re, will respond even better to the needs of multilingual and multicultural Europe. It's all good until if you are a company in one of those countries that wants to be found by Americans or the English-speaking world, you're going to have to have two domains, one in your whatever the script may be. And one where the rest of us can fit, because, you know, when my wife writes kanji, whew, I can't imagine having to write in kanji dot ja to find a, you know, a Japanese website, JP or whatever country, whatever the domain main ending is for Jap Japan. But I know they're doing it. So I guess it shouldn't matter because, you know, I can't read what's on there anyway, except Google does great translation now. So we'll see what happens with this. Um, and those of you that are in... Um, that speak Portuguese or Spanish, um, Greek, of course, with Greek with acrylic characters. So we'll, we'll love this uh, new feature. And uh, it, it's probably good for you, for your business in your countries. But I think you're going to need two domains, one for the English-speaking world and one for your countrymen. This is something big today. And, uh, you know, we've moved blueberry.com over onto an Amazon EC2 instance. It's on a, boy, it's on a Mac Daddy server over there. Uh, really, what we did is uh, we love GoDaddy, but we ran out of capacity, you know, really out of processing capacity. We upgraded as far as we could. The traffic was getting so huge, and the services we were using on it, uh, really, the it, it beyond, we had to move into really the next class, an enterprise level, service level. And... Uh, Today, EC2 announced that they're looking to offer lower-cost cloud services for those who need needs are less mission critical. And we do some processes that um, don't need to be run all the time. Our stats service, we run the actual process of stats once every three hours. 
And that is very intensive. I mean, it takes a lot of horsepower out of the machine that's doing it because we're running through literally millions of IP. That someone's calling the house. See, this is where you can tell. This is as live as it gets right here. Um, the Amazon EC2 capacity, now they're going to start auctioning off. Basically, if you need peak at 2 o'clock in the morning, we'll give you peak at 2 o'clock in the morning at a much lower cost. And you can auto-launch an uh, EC2 instance, bring a server up for a short amount of time, do what you got to do with a lot of processing power, bring it down, and not incur charges. And it's really, really cool stuff. So it's called a spot instance. And uh, the prices fluctuate based on supply and demand, but you can bid for it. So we'll see what's going to happen here. This will be pretty cool. Uh, we'll be, I told Angela today to look into it and... Uh, it's going to be kind of held. They're going to do these like eBay auctions, and then you'll bid for for slots, and then you just got to figure out how to incorporate it into your your processing and when you plan to do stuff. So uh, it may work for us, may not. It may not. But any time you can save a little money by doing stuff on off peak is good. So you know, be able to do stuff during our number three hours at high peak, and then when we can do it at a lower cost during off peak, you know, it might save us a grand a year or more. Anytime you can do that, it's good. You know, I think finally someone in Congress is going to put a bill forth that I think we all can agree upon. <laughs> been watching TV and never been sitting there and all of a sudden the commercial comes on and it goes up about 30 decibels. <laughs> and you have to grab for your remote to turn it down so you don't wake the whole house up because the commercials went loud. You know, Television views for years have been jarred abrupt by abrupt spikes in volume. And uh, we all die for that mute button. But Congresswoman Anna Isho, and I don't know where she's from. I guess she's a California Democrat, is saying, hey, guess what? Enough is enough. And she's going to introduce a bill, which the House is scheduled to vote on Tuesday. And there's also been an identical uh, bill introduced in the Senate that will require TV and advertising to be the same level. Beautiful. They, I'm sure the, in, the advertising industry hates it, but this is, this is beautiful. This is wonderful. Very good. So what do you think? Think this is a good one? <laughs> maybe if you're not an advertiser on TV, you know, maybe not. Okay, next up, Science Daily. First super-Earths discovered orbiting sun-like stars. No, they haven't figured out if it's really an Earth-like planet. But an international team of planet hunters discovered as many as six low-mass planets around two nearby suns. Uh, I guess they're only like 28, what does it say, million or just 28 light years away? What did they say? I thought it said 20. Yeah, it was only 28 light years away which is relatively close in the neighborhood. <laughs> um, but they say, hey, we found some planets and uh, some orbits around the sun that, uh, you know, and they're the size and distance that, uh, you know, maybe they would support life. So um, pretty cool. Yeah, 28 light years away. So just a hop, skip, and a jump, not too far <laughs> as the crow flies. You know, I've been reading a lot of sci science fiction lately and did it. Oh, I told you my, my new Kindle came and let me tell you about my new Kindle. Actually, let me grab it. And I'll be honest. I like my gen one better. And here's why on the gen one, the, the page changer was on the left side and on the right side, all the way down. It was easy to click and it was quiet with this one. Just listen to this. You guys hear that i don't know if you can hear it in the in the uh in the audio or not but you can hear the thing click i mean it clicks loud and it's driving me nuts and oh i said boy that thing's noisy and it just feels like the screen smaller it isn't because i took the old one and i put it up against it but uh I uh, I don't care for the the new generation one. 
So I, I, may, I may up on eBay trying to find an old one or something, but um, I just liked the other one better. It was easier to change uh, change pages. So I think they messed up on that portion of the design. But here are you, developer. Do you do stuff on PayPal? PayPal has recently released a series of new APIs that allow developers to in, embed PayPal into their websites and applications will, without requiring the user to go to the PayPal website. I think that thing that drives me the nuts the most time about PayPal. He links you over to PayPal. You put your password in. You do like five loops in the PayPal race circuit. You finally click pay, and then you come back to the main website, and you do about five loops on the, um, you know, it should be click, pay, you know, click, password, pay. Come on. Now, Amazon will probably sue them for having one-click purchasing or whatever it is that they're famous for, have a patent on. But... They're offering 150 grand to folks that build new interesting applications. Um, but if you're a coder, <laughs> you don't have much time. You got two days left. I don't think that gives you much time. But uh, they're giving money away to people to come up with cool new ideas to work in that specific environment. Blu ray, have you got one? I don't. You know why? It's largely because of the DRM issue. Now, I'm going to have to do something soon. I'm going to have to buy a Blu-ray player burner uh, because of all this video we're creating. But uh, apparently ho Hollywood is getting concerned that Blu-ray is not making the big explosive arrival as they thought it would. And I'll tell you why. It's DVRs, stream videos, pay-per-view, Roku, Vudu, all these services where you can watch TV, video, you know, how good does it have to get? How many of you are diehard? Come on, let's be honest. Geeknews at gmail.com. Voicemail hotline, plus one, six one nine three four two seven three six five. That's the hotmail number. I want to know how many of you are buying Blu-ray discs like they're going out of style because you just love the picture so much. My HD television set, when we're running HD videos on it, it's fine for me. Do I need that little bit of extra resolution to go Blu-ray? I don't know. Do you guys? I think it's kind of pointless at this point, to be honest with you. But maybe I'm an old fogey. I'm not that old. But uh, the DRM issue is hurting the adoption of Blu-ray big time. Well, let's move on here. I've, t I've thought about in the past doing something like Tech Dirt does and having a story submission page. Does anybody know of a story submission page plugin for WordPress? You know, so where I could just point you guys at a page, you could go and submit a story and we could just approve it real quick. A lot of you send me cool stuff. How about just make it easy for you guys to go in and write the title, you know, put some keywords in, write the article, and if it comes up and I say it's good, I just, boom, I, I punch it out. Is there a plugin for WordPress like that? Does somebody know? You know, we got an army of listeners here. And uh, make it so you get a credit for it, you know, where you can put a link to your website or whatever. That's, you know, that's a way to build a community too. Are you a business owner? Have you cut your landlines? Are you have all your customers on? My, hear my doggy out there? He's being noisy. Um, have you cut the landline? Have you cut the cord? Have you walked away from uh, Ma Bell and you're now on? A mobile, or all your employees on mobile. You know, I don't know how you would control. You know, if you give an employee a, a cell phone. You know, will they carry two? Will customers be calling them on their personal phone and on the company phone? Would you lose customers when an employee went away or to a competitor and took the? You know, if they were on one phone and you know, that's what I would worry about. So, uh, what are you guys using in your businesses? Now, raw voice, we're virtual. Everything is, uh, you know, we have a virtual, we have the 800 number you dial into is basically a glorified uh, voicemail service, and it routes you to us. And actually, we're probably, at some point, we got to start moving that over onto uh, Google's system because it's free because we're paying for a service now. But uh, we like it so we can schedule when people actually can call us and can't, and it's a kind of a phone tree type of thing, and it's it almost will work the same as Google Voice, but... Um, we got to figure out how to get the 800 number moved, but how many of you've just, you know, how many of your landlines just don't ring anymore? And I'll be honest, 
The only reason we use a landline was because of being connected to TalkShoe the last time around, and the audio quality was so horrible, and the service level was so horrible over there that uh, I got to find a new way next year if we're doing a 24-hour show to have people interact. It just didn't work. Uh, there was times it was down. You know, I, I basically, I want to be able to, way to control people, be able to, you know, squelch them if I need to. So, uh, you know, any other services out there where I can kind of do like a party line call where I actually can control them without having to pay for it? I know I get a free conference call, but that doesn't allow me to mute everybody or mute individuals. Um, anybody know of any services out there like that? I mean, that's what I liked about TalkShoe, but something, something's going on over there. It really is. All right, over at spacetoday.net, Delta II launched NASA Astronomy Satellite. A Delta II successfully placed a NASA Astronomy Satellite into orbit on Monday. This is the uh, spacecraft, the Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer, WISE, uh, put into a sun-synchronous orbit. The launch has been scheduled uh, for last week, but it was delayed for due to technical glitches, but they did get it in orbit, and it's going through checkout now um, safely in orbit. So congratulations to that. Along with that, uh, the Congress has approved the NASA budget. Uh, $18.7 billion. I don't think the president signed the NASA budget. I don't think the president signed the DOD budget. Uh, there's a whole bunch of budgets he hasn't signed. Um, they've been approved by Congress, but haven't been signed. So I don't know what the story with that is. I don't follow politics close enough to do it. But the budget's been approved for NASA for 2010. Uh, $18.7 billion. Mars Orbiter is exit safe mode. The, Nar Mar excuse me, the NASA Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter Excellent extended safe mode this week because of computer problems. MRO had been in safe mode since August. And a couple of unexpected computer resets were causing concerns. So they had to do some uh, software patches. And they feel that MRO will be back to normal scientific observations by uh, next week. Next article is a hot one by uh, Mark Cuban. And I think this is a, a question we should all ponder a little bit and maybe uh, reach out to the FCC on. Should the FCC reclaim broadcast spectrum? Now, we talked about this in sh the show already, but Mark brings up some points in his article here that I said, oh, I didn't have a spin on it that way. Did you guys know that your local television stations are using just a smidgen of the actual frequency that they're allotted, and they're starting to sell off and rent spectrum in and around their frequency? Did you guys know that? You do realize that the local television stations in your community pay nothing for that spectrum license, right? Hmm. What do you think? Should the FCC go back and get that spectrum? Be a big fight. All right, those of you that are still uh, Chevrolet fans and still can, uh, can uh, gulp down and, and uh, consider buying a GM car, Seven Chevy models are eligible for the 199 AutoNet mobile Wi-Fi router. And if you remember, we talked to AutoNet folks last year at uh, CES. And uh, now if you're, uh, you have a, basically a carpool and you have AutoNet in your Chevy, uh, guess what you get to do? Surf the Internet while you're driving. You can do that now with an EVDO card, but it's just built in. You have Wi-Fi in your car, so your kids can uh, a game on one machine. You can uh, write blog posts on the other. And then the driver can get in a wreck for trying to check his email via Wi-Fi in the car. So um, anyway, if you're, uh, if you're a Chevy fan, seven Chevy models eligible for the 199 AutoNet mobile Wi-Fi router. And uh, it is available for 500 bucks up front and some other vehicles. But uh, it's uh, been dubbed the Chevrolet Wi-Fi by AutoNet Mobile. So uh, we'll see how this goes. Next up, free screencasting tools, guide to the best tools to record your screen. You know, you know, I look at this article by Robin Good, and I wonder, did you recycle this? Because I thought he did something like this before, but uh, he's got a, uh, a number of screencasting tools that are free. Um, I'm still a big Camtasia fan. It just works. It really does, not it works well. But these are best free tools if you can't uh, afford the Camtasia price. Love to have them on here as a sponsor. Anybody got a connection over to, you know, over Camtasia? Love to have them on the show as a sponsor of the show. And just, I use that product all the time. 
And then again, I talked about that uh, Google AdSense for feeds and uh, connected into your Twitter account uh, with FeedBurner. Yeah, I'll have this link up in the show notes. We've talked enough about that. Michael Arrington over at TechCrunch. Of course, uh, there was a lot of people talking about him over the weekend saying that uh, the crunch pad may have been just a big, you know, hoopla. People may have been, you know, just been a big uh, way to gain attention. But I saw his lawsuit he filed. <laughs> but beyond that, he's posted a uh, blog post. It's called The End of Handcrafted Content. And uh, is talking about how how old media, newspaper, is they're scared. And they are scrambling to do whatever they can to save uh, to save themselves. And he talks about how they always are talking about their own demise. <laughs> and uh, I think it's funny. He's an old media frets over blogs and aggregators that summarize content and link back to the original source. They can't make a business in that world, they say, so they run the other way and try to find a way to protect and charge for content. Um Content's going to be there with or without them. It may be a little harder to find, and we may have to step it up a little bit in the, as on the public side. But uh, pretty good article by Michael over there. All right, folks, that's the end of regular content right here at the one-hour mark. And uh, I've got a few voicemails. Some of them are huh, kind of short. I don't know what we're going to get here. There's a two-second one, 10-second one, and 22-second one. So let's just see what that's all about uh, probably nothing but we'll have fun with them anyway and then there's one from trucker tom he uh comments about my sprint comment and i'm sure he's going to have some in light be in light for us so let's go ahead and hey trucker tom thanks for all the cool stuff you sent me i appreciate it if you guys don't listen to the trucker tom podcast that's a podcast you need to subscribe to you know trucker tom is tells you the way it is he really does he's pretty straightforward he's got lots of cool stories to tell and uh, in a format that I really like. So let's go ahead and see if this two second voicemail of anything has anything that besides maybe an like, expletive. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> oh, I just think what you're doing tonight is awesome. Keep it up and doing a good job, guys. Thank you. Oh, that was that was someone that called in during the 24 Bye. hour podcast. That's cool. Here's the next one. Hey, Todd, this is Cody from uh, Houston, Texas. I was just hey, Cody. calling in. To, um, thank you for the awesome time and uh, the memories from the Geek News Central 24-hour podcast. It was an awesome time. Um, I, I hope you enjoyed it. I know that your um, viewership did enjoy it, and I hope you can do it again next year. Thank you, Todd. Well, this year I survived better, Cody. This year I actually wasn't as wrecked as I was the year before, and part of it was because I got enough sleep the night before. That helped. Um, but I did get kind of punchy if you watch from the beginning and some of the ones on the end you know there are some things that are you know like my guard gets let down and some good stuff is in there <laughs> trade secrets and you know there's some good stuff in there there really is but uh and then rambling talks it's you do 24 hours by yourself with a few, you know people coming in and out it's it's uh it can be a bit of a challenge but uh i'm glad you enjoyed it and uh I think what we're going to do next year, and I actually talked about this near the end of the show, is maybe what I'm going to do, and this is, boy, this is a big one. Maybe I'm going to find three or four other people that are crazy enough to do 24 hours with me, and maybe we'll do like five days straight. Ho, ho, ho. Would that be cool? A five-day you know, one guy takes over for 24 hours, boom, at the end of 24 hours, hand off to the next person. He does 24 hours. Yeah, kind of a cool idea, huh? Well, we'll see. And each person would, re would be uh, responsible for getting their own guest and their own content. But uh, I think it would be worthy of making some big news. <laughs> All right, here comes the Trucker Tom uh, Sprint comment. Let's see what uh, what uh, Trucker Tom says. Hey, Todd. Tom Wiles here, hey. a.k.a. Trucker Tom. Hey. I was listening to you uh, talk about a couple of different things. Uh, your air card, you have a U727, which I've had one of those for uh, more than a year from Sprint. Yeah, I love that very card. very happy with it. Me too. 
uh, get pretty decent speeds out of it. Uh, sometimes the speeds will actually vary depending on which cell I'm in. Uh, versus your, uh, you've got a, one of these uh, something 300s that I've seen on their website that are also supposed to do WiMAX, and you're kind of complaining about the speeds out of it. And so I'm not sure what's going on with that. But uh, not, I'm not going to be upgrading anytime soon. Don't. <laughs> so thanks for relating your uh, experience with that. Yeah. So I hope you're able to get that solved anyway. The other thing I was uh, listening to you talk about was uh, AT&T essentially calling its... Uh, it's uh, iPhone data users hogs, uh, especially in San Francisco and New York. 3% of the people using 40% of the data or some such thing. And uh, I don't know. I'm happy with Sprint. Still have my uh, HTC Touch phone with Sprint. I've got the, the Sprint Simply Unlimited plan, Simply Everything plan. It's unlimited. And I'm had it for uh, coming up on two years now. Very, very happy with it. Uh, I use the heck out of it. Uh, don't ever have to worry about using too much data or too, talk too much. And sometimes I do talk a lot on it. And, uh, of course, it's my podcast aggregator as well as the playback device. And so I'm downloading gigabytes of uh, podcasts every month. I don't, And I have no idea... You know, I know I'm going, you know, you know, they claim it's unlimited, and they've never said a word about it, uh, about my data usage. And as I say, I, I do download a lot of podcasts. I'm subscribed to probably 50 or 60 podcasts at least. Now, uh, you know, so I'm getting new ones every day, and uh, that data, you know, it does add up over time and uh, they never say a word so uh, still happy with my sprint and I'm happy with the sprint coverage so anyhow hope you get the uh, the U300 or whatever the model number is hope Junk. you get that problem resolved <laughs> and uh, so in any case hope you have or hope you're having a you have a merry christmas and a happy new year and all the listeners out there we'll catch you later hey tom you know something I found something out about my Sprint account. I signed up under a business account, and they told me that I don't have a limit. Did you sign up under a business name or a personal name? So that I, that kind of blew me away because I was talking, yeah, this, you know, you got the five. He said, oh, no, no, sir, you're on a business account. You don't have a limit. Huh? So check your terms of service on that Sprint eVideo card. If you've got it underneath the business account, maybe that's how you're now. Maybe I'm putting out bum gouge here, but that's what the guy told me on the phone. And he kind of was like kind of hushed about it. He didn't say nothing. So I don't know. We'll see. And uh, I've been real careful. I haven't tried to bust the 5 gig cap on my eVideo card yet. So I'm afraid to go over it because it's so expensive. Uh, only time will tell. Maybe I'll have to just purposely do it one month, just go over a little bit. But there's, it's really hard to track how much usage you've had on uh, on it. I know that it's real easy to uh, track usage on the uh, on the Verizon card because they just tell you. It just comes up and says, if you use X number amount of uh, megabytes already. All right, let's go ahead and get into the email comments. Got an email from Chris. He said, hey, Todd, nice work on the podcast wars and 24 podcasts. I think I managed to catch around 14 hours of it, but my wife and son took up the remainder of time. Personally, I didn't experience any stream problems during the 24 podcast, but I think it was really down to being there when there was 150 users rather than trying to get in when there were 1,200. As regards to the 24 podcast, I think you should be proud of the money you managed to earn. Times are tough for a very worthy charity, and overall, I would say that this is the best 24 hour set of content you have done yet i've seen two previously anyhow i just want to drop you a note say thanks for all your efforts and keep up the great work i have included a picture which i thought was a great role reversal i have to show everyone in you stream this you guys are going to laugh now you know i've got the ohanasaurus set up right so let me actually bring this into the uh oh let me hang on i, I messed it up let me show you this Uh, is it going to start? Uh, did it? Oh, shoot. 
Yeah, I didn't. I wasn't able to bring it up. Wonder why? Well, what it is <laughs> for you that are listening. I was going to show the UStream audience. Must be I didn't turn that on. Funny. The uh, it's a picture of me when there's a thousand and twenty viewers online, and uh, I got the man from Mad Magazine <laughs> and Leo Laporte both on the Ohanosaurus and me looking at him. Pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool stuff. It was really, really good. Um, but anyway, um, I kind of des messed up his show when I announced it. <laughs> um, yeah, and I, I'm not going to say how I said it, but uh, everyone got a good laugh out of it. And I was, uh, I felt pretty silly, but you know, it is what it is. But yeah, this picture of uh, Leo Laporte, Dan from uh, from Mad Magazine, <laughs> and uh, and Leo, funny, very funny picture, very cool, Chris. I'm glad you captured that. Um, that one I'll have to print and put somewhere because it definitely was a was a good one. I got an email from Jeff. He says, "What if we were to give out an X prize to someone who could figure out a way to compress a video in such a way as not to degrade it in any visible way?" Because that's what I think everyone is using the iPod slash iPhone for these days. The the Droid is going to be in the same boat soon. Um, Beep the apps. It's all about the video, baby. And this is from Jeff. It would be nice for uh, someone to come up with a big bunch of cash for uh, to do that. But, uh, you know, there's some magic there. I'd love to know maybe someone that uh, is a longtime Leo uh, Laporte fan that maybe has an inside connection to him. I'd like to know what they're encoding in. I'd like to know what their actual settings are in Final Cut Pro when they make the export of his video. Because I was watching it on the Roku box, and it was really good. Even on my big HDTV, blew out. And he was doing this trick. He was going from 16 by 9 to 4 by 3. And I have no idea how he... And they must have done some sort of overlay editing to do that. Because no one got squished, you know, in the Ustream. I just don't know how he did it. So um, it probably was... In the, in the editing itself, they put it the 4x3 frame and a 16x9 frame or something. But um, that was freaking me out because, it, you know, it filled the screen with Leo and then it would go to the the the, the, the Skype source and it would be a 4x3 frame. It was really weird. And I was like freaking out because I was trying to figure out how they did that. So maybe if some Final Cut Pro uh, expert would know as well, but love to know what their export setting says. That's the challenge with this video is getting the right balance of export uh, rates and so forth. Another email from Jeff says, Hootsuite is a Twitter client intended for business use. Some of the companies using it now include uh, Walt Disney, NBC Universal, TMZ, Viacom, Revision 3, NBA, and the Major League Baseball. So thanks, Jeff. Appreciate that. Good email from Peter. Hey, really enjoyed uh, talking to you on this year's Marathon Podcast. Todd, hope you caught up in your sleep. Well done for such a terrific effort. It was very inspiring. Here's wishing you a very happy and successful 2010 all my best, Peter. And Peter's with Latopia Podcast. Very interesting gentleman. Um, and it's L-I-T-O-P-I-A dot com. Very smart, intelligent. You can tell he's a... We talked about the publishing business. And um, I really enjoyed talking to him. I really did. Now, the Game On Girls, who came on almost uh, midnight uh, Eastern time, I, would, I didn't know if we were going to have... Uh, how the reaction was going to have these, you know, a sports segment. But I was kind of doing this as going down, downhill. At about the time they came on, these two young ladies, bright, chipper, full of energy. If you're a sports fan, you got to go over and listen to Melissa and Erica. Here's a note they sent me. Um, Todd, thank you for including us in the 24-hour podcast lineup. The 24-hour podcast is doing great things for a great cause. So we're honored to be part of it. We are so sorry that we are talking over each other. I hope it wasn't too disruptive for the listeners. We had a great time chatting with you and wish we had a bit more time to talk. Um, Tiger, admittedly, there's never enough time to cover that topic these days. We hope that you check out the Game On podcast. See links below and feel free to send us a line if you have any thoughts or comment on how to make it better. On another note, we'd love to pick your brain about promoting the podcast and bringing in advertisers. I'll skip that for now. 
Many thanks again for everything. It was an absolute pleasure. Uh, it, mine, it was my pleasure, Melissa and Erica. And I was referring to, to number one and number two because I was keep getting people's names wrong during the uh, event. So, it, you know, you get punchy at that hour. So many people in and out. Uh, but uh, anyway, that was uh, fun to have them on. It really, really was. And the guys were all staying on too because they were, you know, pretty cute. So uh, they were, they were, not everyone was pretty nice in chat. Next email is from Frank. He said, hey, uh, fatcheck.org, a nonpartisan, nonpartisan service of the Annenberg Foundation on the Climate Gate emails. And uh, short version of the post, a lot of hooey. I think there's a lot of people saying a lot of hooey both ways on both sides of the fence there, Frank. I think some people are saying, uh -huh. some people are saying, oh, oh, no, no, nothing to see over here, nothing to see over here. <laughs> oh. So let's see here. Got an email from Peter, and yeah, so what's this loading? Hey, Todd, why don't you know uh, of a power slash battery charger for the iPhone? Take a look at M Morphe. Actually, Mophie, and uh, he had linked me to it. We've talked about the Mophie on this show quite a little bit, Peter, and uh, you, this is my third one. So uh, thanks for that link. I, I appreciate it. Got an email from uh, Howdy Hey. My name is Marty. I just listened to your podcast for the first time on my mobile via podcast directories. A smile rolled over my lips when you read out Pete's view on, the, on your ambience, and I had a thought. Make a game each podcast where the viewers have to spot a predefined object of your choosing Mo modern day where's wally great show keep up the good work m eggleston so thanks for that email that's appreciated and uh you must have listened to one of those where we actually said what's it oh wait, there's a new thing in the office you guys ought to see my fish i got a fish now you can wait till you see this fish i'll have to show him on the next show um I got an email from uh, one of our longtime listeners, and um, I want to uh, uh, have you guys check this company out. Um, hey, Todd, I met you personally. I've not met you personally, but you've met Rob. Um, he's uh, one of the folks that came out to one of our meetups in Michigan. He says, while well, I dated him and I passed info from Sprint on to you here and again, I left Sprint last year to work for a GPS software company called ActSoft. I know Rob chatted with you about it on ICQ one night, and you said to send the info you might chat about on the podcast. Not sure if you ever forwarded it on or not, but I've just come out with my yearly national meeting, and podcasting came up. The company is Axoft, and she gives me the fa uh, the Facebook link to it, but they're over at www.actsoft.com. She goes, we really have some cool software that is client-server-based and pretty spectacular, runs on any carrier's cell phones. We have some really amazing mobility applications as well as a panic button that is tied to, to a GPS for emergency. We launched this weekend a device called Dash Track that gives real GPS location, mileage, acceleration, hard stop data, real time, and not as the crow flies, as well as we are the creators of the HAS device, House Arrest Solution. You may have seen this on the TV program CSA as they like to use our device in their storylines. We're an all-American owned, operated, no outsourcing company that is privately held. We're small, but we, we're worldwide. We provide GPS services for the Pope in Rome and work on all networks. Most of the coworkers are on Facebook with me, and I was talking to our media marketing relations. And uh, basically, yes, Melissa, you can, or Mary, you can share my info <laughs> with your, the folks over there, and I'll link up to your company. Sounds like you guys are doing some cool stuff. And see, if you're a longtime listener of the show, and I know who you are, and you email once in a while, I have no problem pimping a company for people to check out if I know you. See, that's the way relationships work in the new media space. So what we need to do, Mary, is we need to get Axoft in some sponsorships for podcasts, okay? <laughs> I had to throw it in there. Um, Trucker Tom sent me a, oh, this is from the last show. So we're, we're done with emails. And hey, look at that. Beautiful. Great timing to finish up. Thanks, everybody. It's been fun. I'll let you know if I have to go on emergency travel. Um, I don't know, <laughs> quite honestly, if there will be. There, I don't know if I'll be here for Friday's show. Um, we'll see. And it all depends on what develops here over the, the, uh, n the next couple of days. But uh, I'll keep you advised. And uh, I'll blast something, put something on the blog, and then we'll have someone stand in to do the show 
uh, for you, no matter what. Uh, there should be a, an edition come out. Um, please bear with us and bear with me. Um, these things kind of come up from time to time, and uh, and uh, um, it's just one of those situations. And um, But anyway, that's it. We'll see you next time. Geeknews at gmail.com. Geeknews at gmail.com. Or call the voicemail hotline at plus one six one nine three four two seven three six five plus one six one nine three four two seven three six five geek news at gmail dot com everyone take care and aloha. <sighs>